Welcome to It's Your Date with Destiny with Apostle Vivian and Pastor Gemma Duncan of Divine Destiny Worship Center in Diego Martin. For the next 30 minutes, join us as we take you on a journey of maximizing your potential and realizing your goals through Jesus Christ. Whether it's on a Sunday, Tuesday, or Friday, or any other day of the week, a warm welcome awaits you at Divine Destiny Worship Center, a place where your full potential is discovered. Here's a special invitation to join us at our sanctuary for today's message. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the name of the Lord shall be praised and it will be great. This is an awesome weekend. It's the weekend that men are being specifically celebrated. People call it the Father's Day. Father's Day. We call it Men's Day. And this Sunday at Divine Destiny Worship Center, as we say in Divine Destiny, men of royal destiny will be highlighted. It's Men's Day. We want you to come. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be powerful. Oh, my word. It's going to turn your thinking that you have had towards men into a more balanced, pleasant thinking. Yes, men are necessary. i come up closer. Men, we, males, we are necessary. Yes, we may give some trouble now and then, but we are necessary. And we're going to be delving into all of that. Why God made man? Is man, the male man, part of the new thing that God is doing? I can tell you, yes. And we will see how. Amen? So good morning. I'm Apostle Vivian Duncan on behalf of my wife, Apostle Gemma, and all the covenanters of Divine Destiny, which have sent to the House of Champions, welcoming you to It's Your Date with De Destiny, our television arm um, of our media ministry. And I know you've been receiving some powerful, powerful word, powerful truths. You've been impacted by this series that we are doing called Behold, I Do a New Thing. Am I Ready for the New Thing? And the sub subtitle, My Times Are in God's Hands. I want you to know whether you're weeping, whether you're laughing, whether it's crying time, whether it's dancing time, the Bible says there's a time for everything. And that is in God's hand. And it could be as ugly as ever. Because I know some people don't like the weekend they call Father's Day. Because you remember what your father did to you and did to the family. But this is a good time to forgive him. Release yourself of all the pain. Amen? And enjoy the experience. Why not visit us at Divine Destiny Worship Center and see what God has in store for you? You don't want to miss it. You don't want somebody to tell you what it's like. So be with us this Sunday, the 19th. Amen? Good. Just call up somebody and just bask in the truth that's coming forth out of the excerpt of the sermon that we have chosen for you today. Us. If we understand the mechanics of time, then we'll realize when the time comes for a certain matter, you move into that matter. You do not allow other people to keep you in the past. You have to tell them, hello, I have a future to move on to. I don't know what you remember of me. <laughs> I don't know what you remember of me, but what I wanted to know is that I have moved on and I'm moving on. Hallelujah. In Galatians chapter 4, let's read this. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law. When the what? 
fullness of time. Now, remember, to reach the fullness, you have to go through the process. So, 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 so it, it's, it's really a, a combination there of chronos and kairos. So, when man sinned and man fell, God began a program to bring man back to him. So, for almost 4,000 years, there was a movement a long time along the continuum or along the chronos of time. But there came a day when Mary, and that was the Kairos moment, delivered Jesus. Come on, give God a praise. Somebody shout, God, when you say that is it, that is it. Oh, my Jesus. I want you to read, to meditate on Psalm 30, Psalm 31, and Psalm 32. Those are three Psalms that speak to the power of time in your life and in our lives. Psalm 31, Psalm 32. The pivotal voice speaking to you is in verse 15 of 31. Your times are in God's hands. Psalm 30 talks about time in the day and night rhythm. Because remember the scripture says, for as long as the earth remains, there will always be what? Day and night. Well, seed time harvest, there will be day, day and night hot and cold. Well, Psalm 30 verse 5 says what? Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Because what I found out, Brother Elmo, is this, is that God separates Kronos from Kairos with a but. <laughs> You, you, you catch that? I say separates. He brings a jarring stop to Kronos and what he's been doing to you. With our butt. And he introduces Kairos to take over. And as soon as Kairos comes and takes over, Kronos comes back again. Because we cannot even live... Oh, we, We'll talk, talk about that this next week. You, you cannot ask God, be asking God all your life for a miracle. You are entitled to a miracle. But the real standard of living in the kingdom is not miracles. It's a daily rhythm of blessing. Miracles represent emergencies. When there's an emergency, when things didn't work the way it's supposed to work, you want God to do a miracle. But God really wants, to live, wants us to live in such a way that we don't have to ask him for one. Because every moment is another moment of a revelation of the power, the grace, and the favor of God. That's how he wants us to live. If we catch that, then we will not uh, sit by or kneel by or run by or whatever by you, you, we, we do. Bombarding God. God, I need another miracle. And God asks you, what you did with the last one? The last one I did for you was to prepare you to move along the, 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 the chronology of time, living in a rhythm of my blessings every day. Because one of the things you're going to learn is that in, 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 in the process of time, going through your valley of the shadow of death, he's preparing you to sit at his table with decorum. To sit there with some dignity. You didn't just get dragged up there. You passed through a process. So you know how to sit. And actually enjoy. 
the meal that is preparing. Because <laughs> uh, uh, when you get to Psalm 31, well, Psalm 30, uh, he says that he has given, he has taken me out of a night time of tears and regrets. And the sun has arisen on me. And now I am full of joy. Oh, what we're going to learn there is that the, 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 the time, uh, the, 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 the night time of crying and weeping and so on, that time became, it was really a womb. It was a womb in which God was using, using all his tools to shape you into a new creature. The baby that comes out today uh, out of the mother's womb in, 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 in the delivery room started off in her womb as an egg and a sperm. But over time, over the chronos, what happened? There were changes. And what happened? Two little simple cells have developed into billions of complicated cells, complex cells, running systems and organs and creating movement and creating thinking and giving the ability to absorb nutrition. Two little simple cells. That is why when you come through from a situation, you are more complex than you used to be. And I didn't, did I say complicated? If you come out complicated, we have a problem. You, you need to go back. Mm. But you must come out more complex. And yet the essence of complexity is simplicity. Because you're going to learn that all that you went through can't make you cocky. It makes you know that you are just human. And had it not been for the glory, had it not been for the grace of God, I'd be dead like anybody else. That's why David said, had it not been for God's grace, then the enemies that wanted to take me out will take me out. He said, but the grace of God kept me. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. And that's why in that same Psalm, three verses later, David said, I went through a night time of sea and a season, a chronos time of pressure, but my Kairos moment has given me back my dancing. He has turned my morning into dancing again. I used to dance until the Philistines slapped me. But I, I went through my season and I tried to dance but I could not. But my feet got light again. My feet got light again. Because God said to my enemies, this is the Kairos moment. You have given him enough pressure. This is it. You have no more influence on him. God, Jesus, hallelujah. And you, in, 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 in 31, the pivotal verse, as I said, my time's in God's hand. Because when you look back at where you came from, you know it's not your brain that brought you out. It's not your smartness. And what I can tell you is your smarty pantsness that got you into trouble playing as smarty pants. Yeah. It, it got you into trouble. And you tried to use your smartness to get out of there, but you could not. It had to be the grace of God. Some people realize late in the game, after they got a limp, then they realize they should have yielded to God a long time. Tell your neighbor, don't wait on the limp. Apostle Gemma is going to be unfolding that uh, in her uh, Touched by an Angel series. Don't wait on the limp. Hey, hey, if, if you know what God is trying to get you to do, say yes, God, yes, yes. And when you go into, into 32, he said, I'm not leaving it up to chance now. As you go along the chronos, the continuum of time, from one Kairos moment to another, one blessing after another, one breakthrough after another, I will guide you with my eyes and I will instruct you in the way that you should go. Oh my gosh. In other words, now that I, I, I know what God wants to do, I have a better than even chance of making it to the point where he wants to take me. Because he says, I'm not leaving you to do it by yourself. I left you by yourself and you messed it up. 
and left you by yourself and you only going go down in the dead end street and knocking your head, knocking your head. He said, this time, tell anybody this time. He said, I want you to look into my eyes because I can't guide you without you beholding who I am. Because it's in my eyes that you'll see the new thing unfolding. Hebra Shanda. And I want nobody to ever be afraid to look at God in his eyes. His, sometimes his eyes are like fire, but that's necessary to create a fire inside of you. But lots of times, because he's God who so loved this world. His eyes are full of love. Oh yes, he's stern. Oh yes, he's going to tell you, break that down, break the other. But if you keep looking into his eyes, he's a God of compassion. He's a God that when others condemn you, even though he knows more about you than they know, he still says, I love you with all my love. I already paid the price for your restoration. So you can afford to look into ha, you could look into my eyes because in my eyes there's the map of where you're going. In my eyes there's a road map. In my eyes you will see every obstacle. In my eyes you will see every valley, every mountain. In my eyes you will see a reflection of who you are and who I'm going to bring you into. So he said, I want to instruct you. I want to guide you. I'm not leaving this one up to chance. You are, you are my precious traveler. You are the one that I'm using as, a, as an example to your relatives, to your co-workers. He said, I'm not leaving up to chance. He said, I want your neighbors to watch you. As they keep watching you, they're going to see you watching me. And as you watch me, they're going to watch at what I'm doing in you and through you and for you. He said, those co-workers who, who say you're from small church and whatever, he said, you don't, don't stand up to argue with them. Keep your eyes on my eyes. Keep your eyes in my eyes. And my eyes will release to you a strength. Whoo, Shabba. And you're going to begin to see things like how I see them. Peter Bonaparte. Peter um, Bonaparte. Well, I just want to thank God for life yeah. because I'm only 23 and in this 23 years of living, the devil tried to take my life three times. Oh. Mm. Jesus. You know, and I just thank God for all that he has done with me over the years, my ministry that he has blessed me with. You know, guess the talent. And what I really want to thank God for is for, for grace, peace, and comfort. Because Amen. I lost my mom a month ago. Hmm. And instantly what came to my mind is, is a battle between me and the devil. He paint thoughts in my head. Boy, stop drum. Boy, stop dance. Boy, stop, you know, bring people to know God. Stop talk about God. Stop, just stop doing everything and you just grieve. You just grieve. You know, let your heart out, hmm. point out. And I just want to thank God. A month now I'm standing here with you all, giving God praise and thanks Hallelujah. for Amen. health, strength, and all that he has done for me thus far. Thank you. And my testimony is that I want to give God all the praise. Amen. Yes. For 30 years I've been, you could say, abused sexually, mentally, physically, everything. And three years ago, almost three years ago, my husband died. And when he died, I just know this was time for I to actually give God all that I had left in me. Jesus. I used them as my medication. I used them as my life. And I used them as my strength. Right. I'll be walking a new life. Amen. It's no turning back. Amen. I have a lot of trials with my son. But I know God. He's going to deliver that. him. Because he that's has right. delivered me. And that's all I'm asking. Is that he delivered my son. Just as how he had delivered me. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Me anointing oil. Here we are letting you know that the oil represents the anointing, represents Holy Spirit, and the function of the anointing, which is to break and destroy yokes, is going to be released to you right now. Good. And it's quite prophetically uh, uh, connected not by coincidence but by prophetic connection we are saying that this Sunday is June 19th which nationally is also celebrated as Labor Day 
Well, today I want to release this anointing to you from Matthew eleven twenty eight, where Jesus says to all who are laboring, and this has nothing to do with going outside and work or going into an office and work. I'm talking about carrying burdens, laboring under burdens. I'm here to declare to you. Jesus says, come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So you've been carrying a heavy load, a heavy yoke of what has happened during the, the time around, surrounding Father's Day and you are under serious pressure. Well, your labor day has come to an end and your day of victory is here. Receive it right now. But the key to the whole thing is to forgive. 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 This Sunday, we are going to be dealing with sores, stripes, scabs, scars, and so. Just like the eagle behind me. If you deal with your sores, soon you'll be soaring. Be here for our Men's Day celebration this Sunday. Amen. And as we have said, our book of the month is I Am an Able Man. Very well written. Written by me, of course. Very well written and very pointed to turning your life as a man from being average and mediocre to being excellent. Amen? You will soar like the eagle that you are. So, this Monday, we have our radio program on 98.1, 98.1 at 9 p.m. This Tuesday, uh, we have another radio program on 107.1, The Word, which is Living the More Abundant Life. This Friday at 3 p.m., back on 98.1, we will have, yes, I know you, you anticipated it, yes, Ask Pastor Gemma at 3 p.m., the program that says, that answers questions, Apostle Gemma answers questions, few are willing to ask. And fewer dare to answer. Amen. Of course, again, this Sunday, the 19th. Yes, it's Labor Day in the country with the holiday on Monday. But for some people, it has been labor year. Labor years. You've been carrying a burden. Come, 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 come. Come to Divine Destiny Worship Center and take the yoke of Christ off load yours at the altar. Amen? Good. So, until we meet again, I'm Apostle Vivian Duncan on behalf of my wife, Apostle Gemma, and all the covenanters of Divine Destiny Worship Center, the House of Champions, saying to you, began life as a winner. Don't live it as a victim or die as a loser. You're a God idea because when God made you, he had destiny on his mind. God bless you until we meet again. Next time on... Divine Destiny Worship Center's program. This program, it's your date with destiny. You will hear this. And zero in on verse 18. Let's read together. Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall he not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. And just to go to the NIV to look at another version, it says, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, 
I am doing a new thing. The King James says, I will. So it's, it, it's like if it's in a time to come. But the NIV says, it's already in train. I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth, not shall. It springs forth when? Now. When? Now. now. Tell your neighbor, that's Kairos. That means it's the moment for it to happen. That to stick inside your, your, your sensibility. God is a no God. Tell your neighbor, God is a no God. But you see, God is a no God because he, he operates in eternity. He operates in? So now for God may not necessarily mean the time that you have assigned for him to do the thing. But as far as he's concerned, it's happening already. And what we need to do is what? Position ourselves. Tell a neighbor in this seasoning, in this season, where is seasoning? Season, sorry. In this season, positioning is everything. I say, tell a neighbor that for me. In this season, positioning is everything. But that's not the, the whole thought. Where you are will determine what you get from God. Tell the neighbor that. So position yourself where God wants you to be. And he will give you access to all that you need. So tell the neighbor the whole thing. In this season, positioning is everything. And he will give you access to everything that you need. And I want you to know that is not some hype that I'm giving you. That is how I live. And it works. And it, based on the mentoring principle, if it works for me, it has to work for you. Because what? You are following me as I'm following Christ. And it must come down in what they call the slipstream. As it passes me, me having experienced it, you following me, you should also experience it. So say, say to God, Lord, so let it be. Whatever is happening with apostle, every blessing that comes to him, every breakthrough that he is getting, every release of the anointing upon him and Apostle Gemma must come upon me. As you continue to reach your goals through Jesus Christ, this has been It's Your Date with Destiny, a production of Divine Destiny Media Ministry. Until next time, you began life as a winner. Don't live life as a victim or die as a loser. For when God made you, he had destiny on his mind.